Well, hello there, gang. Welcome to this episode of Media Champions. I'm your host, Mary Therese Griffin in Atlanta. Today on the program, we welcome Cliff Rohde. He is with Goat Cloud, and he joins us today. Cliff, nice to have you on the show. Mary Therese, it's great to be here. Thanks for inviting me. Well, thank you for offering up your sage advice. We love that here on this show. And uh, we, we offer it with gusto. And you do what you do with gusto. I know that you, your company, you work where communication and technology meet. Let's walk people through what it's like to be a potential new client. And bam, they get to meet Cliff and figure out where they need to be going when the, in this world of storytelling. Sure. Well, you know, a lot of my clients tend to be on the smaller side um, of, of businesses, mom and pops, solo um, lawyers, and, and but a whole host of others, nonprofits, um, some mid-sized companies too. But anyway, so usually they, they come to me, you know, years ago it was they came to me because they had no online presence whatsoever. And now they tend to come having an online presence that really needs some help. So we really have a pretty in-depth conversation with them, find out, you know, what it is they'd like to do and start talking about the types of tools we can deploy to help them, whether it's get more customers, get the word out better, what have you. Sounds to me like uh, everybody's got a car, but you're helping them to drive it properly. Am I right? Yeah. Yeah. It's funny. You know, I think, it, again, I, I was thinking back when I was starting, it was people who were, were on bicycles. Um, but, you know, I think pretty much everybody realizes now that if you're going to have any kind of business um, or nonprofit effort, I mean, you have to be online, obviously. And so it's really important to do that well. That's, you know, that's where everybody turns to first. You don't exist, right, if you don't have a presence online. Well, because online is such easy access for your, your customers, your potential customers, and let's talk about those potential customers and, and how you're guiding folks to find them. Because in this day and age with so much opportunity out there, uh, I know a lot of people like to say it's a lot of noise, but let's use the word opportunity because we'll be positive about it. You have to be able to have relationships. How important is it to build those relationships as you're finding those customers and trying to keep those customers? Yeah, I mean, that's absolutely of super importance. Um, I really try to make it um, my goal. I mean, it is my goal, my responsibility to try to be as straightforward with customers as I can, um, talk about potential shortcomings, um, even in potential shortcomings that there might be working with my company instead of some other company. Um, I think that people really respond to that. Um, I feel like uh, my clients trust me um, and I trust them. And by building that trust, you know, they're going to be more likely to let their friends or colleagues know that uh, there's this little company that can and is connected in New York to help them out online. When we talk about the, the, the shortcomings, let's, let's dive right into the fact that technology is changing so fast. And the trends are changing so quickly as well. Where do you see these trends headed in the next couple of years? And, and how are you uh, kind of arming your customers and clients with this information? Yeah, you know, it, it's, um, it's really kind of a vexing issue, I think. Um, I, I think that one of the really important trends is the increasing use of AI um, for uh, transactions, um, for things like searching, for advertising, um, you know, it's, it, it is coupled at the same time um, with a, an increasing, I suppose, uh, complexity and sophistication in the types of platforms that are out there that you might use to uh, get the word out about your business online. And so it's, uh, it's really... Um, I think it becomes vexing for a lot of people, for smaller players, to really be to be able to kind of manage that online presence, even though it is mission critical. Um, you know, I, I've found that um, the level uh, of expertise needed to really manage clients online um, has increased over time uh, because exactly what you're saying, Mary Therese. Um, technologies are changing all the time. 
Um, and so you can do so much more than you used to be able to do, but it's also, uh, something that there really is a learning curve for, and, and you need to really be digging into it to understand how it works and to be able to use those tools effectively. You know, when, when you talk about all of the, uh, uh platforms that are out there, it's kind of like walking into Baskin Robbins and there's more than 31 flavors, right? Cause you can, you can put your, your story here, you can put it there. Uh, last question for you. What's it like walking a client through the, the notion that not every platform is where you should be? It's, it's kind of an individualized thing. And a subject matter expert like yourself, is that's what you do. You figure out where they would best be placed. Sure. So, you know, that's part of the conversation. And <clears throat> one of the uh, one of the conversations or one part of the conversation that I have with people is, you know, where are your customers? You know, we can build the most beautiful website in the world, let's say. Um, but there's just so much competition online right now. The chances of um, finding those people, finding those customers just by building a website, I think are, are gone. I think those days are gone, really. So you really have to be pretty strategic in thinking, well, where are these people already? Um, how do I get there and what type of language and communications do I use on that platform? You know, it, it's very different um, pursuing a particular demographic on Facebook or maybe on LinkedIn as it might be on a TikTok, for instance, right? So it's, it is a part of the onboarding of the customer. Um, and, it, it, you know, I, I mean, one of the things I love about this job is really getting to learn all sorts of things about what people are doing. Um, you know, they, my clients are, are, are uh, subject matter experts in what they do, um, but helping them to think through, well, how do we reach the right audience and how do we really appeal to them in a way that's going to be meaningful for the business um, is, a, is a real kind of conversation to give and take and just absolutely fun to do. Eye-opening a lot of times for the clients. Oh, you said it. And the, the competition is fierce. Cliff, we're out of time, but uh, I think if they have a coach like you, we're just going to call you Coach Cliff, put me in coach, <laughs> you're going to help them out any day. I'd love to have you back because I want to talk further with you about websites because I know you shouldn't just set it and forget it. And you guys are masters at creating beautiful websites. So please say you'll come back and we'll continue this. Oh, thank you so much. I'd love to. Thank you, Cliff. If you want to be connected to Coach Cliff Rohde, we, we know how to find him. We can help you connect. You can find him by finding us here at dailyadbrief.com. I'm Mary Therese in Atlanta. We'll see you next time for more Media Champions. Simplify presents Addressable CTV. Combining the power of TV with the targeting and attribution of digital. Simplify's addressable CTV delivers massive reach with the ability to scale without sacrificing precision. TV buyers can generate incremental reach with household level targeting, frequency controls, reporting, and insights. To learn more about Simplify's addressable CTV and what it can do for your clients, visit simply.fi.